Hello all, my name is Dr. Arvind Joshi and with me is Part, who is in camera. Today, we are explaining linear discriminant analysis in this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I would like to explain to all the aspiring data scientists about the concept of linear discriminant analysis. What is linear in this discriminant analysis? What is discriminant and what kind of analysis we are going to do? I will explain all the things. So first of all, I am going through the terminology part. Whenever we are studying linear discriminant analysis, we are talking about the space. And you know well, you have studied in your science classes and if you are not a science student, you know that data science is for everyone. Either he is a science student, he is a science student or not a science student. Okay. So I am explaining you about the space. A very basic concept is this, that see, this is a space and this room is a space. N number of things are here. So these is N number of features are here. This is a photograph which says if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. This is another one. This is a guitar. And this is cutting. So I have this, all these features are here. There's a fan, AC, cooler, something desk, computer, my pen, myself. I myself is in the space. So these are the features of the space, right? There are n number of features and I want to reduce these features by the help of this discriminant. So I have to create a discriminant. And this discriminant, if you know Hindi well, it is called Vibhedak. It is called Vibhedak. Vibhedak means which is differentiating. So we have to create a discriminator. That discriminator will possess will have the qualification of all the features, right? So, how we are going to create this Vibhedak or discriminant? That is the important thing of this LDA. And this is a part of feature engineering as you know well. So, how to engineering? We are doing the engineering of feature. It means this, you cannot, you cannot work in the thousands and thousands of millions of millions of features you have, because there may be a multicollinearity features are entangled with each other one feature is telling about the another feature and one feature is a subset of another feature and one another is a super subset, subset of another feature so what i have to do i have to create a, a create a subspace or an imaginary space where all the information, say all the important information, which would give me the true result, will come out in that subspace. So coming over this graphical representation, this is X. I have denoted the samples. There are 23 number of samples, X1, X2, X3, and so on to X23. That is, these samples in terms of Data science are called as 23 dimensions or 23 features. I have a set of these 23 samples having 23 number of dimensions or samples. What I am doing? I have created an algorithm to create a subspace wherein all the information coming out of these 23 dimensions would give me a better result, the best result. In case of linear regression, you are creating a line, you are drawing a line which is called the best fit. Here, we are getting a best fit subspace in, in place of a line. So, what happened in this case, I have two set of rules. And I have to apply these two set of rules simultaneously. So, for it, let us say, these data represent two set of groups. Let us say this group is W1 and this is W2. 
out of these samples x1, x2, x3, so on to x23, this W1 group contains x1, x2, x3, x5, x8, x11, x14. And this W2 contains sample x7, x9, x10, x12, x15, x16, x17, x18, x19, x20, x21, x22, and x23. Right. So, now, the representation of this whole set of sample is, I'm doing by, 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 by drawing this curve. Okay. This curve contains all the features of group W1. And this curve, W2, this another set of class which contains W2 numbers, that is 13 samples over here. My rule is this, the algorithm which I am going to create, to create a subspace which has all the information. So what is that? The rule is this, minimum variance within the groups. Variance you know where. That is called scattering. So scattering within the group should be smaller. Minimize the scattering. So I have applied a formula. What I did, I have taken the mean of this group, W1. And that comes out to be mu1. And the mean of this group comes out to be mu2. Right? You are saying an inner circle or say inner curve over here and here. This black curve. What it depicts? I have, I have done an operation over here that minimum variance within the group. So, when I apply the minimum variance, so, in that case, I got these samples, x5, x8, x12, which have the minimum variance. Okay? And in this case, I have got x17, x19, x21, and x23. These have the minimum variance. Okay? And so, now I have to create a subspace. So, now I am creating a subspace. So, now I have to create a subspace. I imaginary space out of this real space. And in that subspace, I have to get the whole the information. And simultaneously, I have to reduce the dimensions also by applying these two rules. These two rules, again I am telling to you that minimum variance within the group and maximum separation between the groups. Right? So, what happened? This, this is the periphery of this curve. W1 taking mu1 and this curve is telling that the minimum variance within the group circle is this. This circle is telling to you that minimum variance within the group. And under this group, there are only x5, x8 and x13 samples are coming in it. Like this. In this circle or say in this group, only x17, x19, x21 and x23. Less is scattered, so minimum is scattered, samples are coming in this group. Okay, now I have to create a subspace. So creating a subspace, I mean let us say I have a line y is equal to wtx, which is a scalar not a vector. So, I am drawing n number of lines, right? Wt, x1, w, so, say so many lines passing through 0, 0, right? So, y is equal to Wtx, where Wt is a transpose. So, what this line will represent? This line has all the features. And their elements are such that the variance within the group is minimum and between the groups is maximum. That is my rule. So, what I did, coming over here, the projection of mu1 in this line is mu1, say cap. Let us say the cap. So, mu1 cap is the projection of this mu1. And for this group, the projection 
of element x5 is here, x12 is here, and x13 is here, and x8 is here. So projecting all the features and these imaginary features have minimum variance within it, right? Taking this group W2, the element inside this curve are x17, x19, x21, and x23. Taking the projection of all these elements, and this and this curve has created. This curve has been created, and this curve contains projected mu to say mu two cap, and say the features inside it are x17 cap, x17 x19 cap, x21 cap, and x23 cap. And you will see over this subspace, there is the class separability is maximum. See, class separability is maximum, and the, the separability or the variance within the group is minimum. This I will prove you. This is the graphical representation. Finally, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dimensions. Though initially we have 23 dimensions on this space. And now we have created this subspace which contains only 7 dimensions. See here, W1 contains X5, X8, X3 which are over here. And W2 contains X17, X19, X21, X23 which are here. So total we have in these two classes we have total number of dimensions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 though initially it has 23 dimensions and the class separability is fine in this subspace. So this is the linear discriminant analysis. I am Part Sarathi Joshi and I am a data scientist. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. I will meet you all in the next video. Thank you.